Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here then hello and welcome. I really hope you enjoy this video and I would love for you all to give the video a big thumbs up and also subscribe if you're new around here. So as you can tell by the title guys, this video is going to be telling you everything that I did to save £40,000 in a two year period. So I did this whilst having a mortgage in my own name that I had to pay out for each month, lots of outgoings, a Mercedes car on finance which is pretty expensive and just overall, whilst having a lot of commitments to pay out for each month, and I'm not telling you this to show off, I'm doing this purely to motivate you guys and show you that if I can do this, then you can too. I wanna to start by saying that I recognize this is a large amount of money to save, and of course you need certain levels of income to be able to save this amount of money. If you're not earning enough to save this amount, you can still apply these tips to save an amount that suits your income levels, but I'm gonna talk you through what I did to enable myself to save this much. If you have been here from the beginning, then you'll know that my first savings goal was to save 20,000 pounds in two years, which I achieved. And I did this whilst living at home with my parents. I worked a full-time job, but I didn't have any other source of income at this time. Although I was living at home, I still had outgoings, I still paid rent, I still had car finance, I still had lots of outgoings, but I managed to save 20,000 pounds in two years as my first savings goal, which I'll leave the videos down below if you wanna check them out. And then my next two year savings goal was to save 40,000 pounds in two years. And I did this by changing my lifestyle and generating myself more income to enable me to do this, which did take some groundwork. It took about two years worth of hard work to see big results, but they came and it enabled me to save this amount. I wanna say as well, before we get into the video, of course, that this video is gonna focus a lot on having another source of income, but it's not all about that. It's very much about your main current job as well. And I'm gonna be talking about all my tips for your current job and how to get the most out of it that you possibly can as well. It's so important to note that it does take time. This sort of thing does not happen overnight, but you can achieve this within a matter of a few years, just with hard work, with patience, with consistency and dedication. During the whole four year period, I was working a full-time corporate job in financial services, working as a technical power planner. And then on top of that, I was also creating myself my own online business by doing something that I love, which is YouTube. And that has enabled me over time to earn a, another source of income, which obviously helps me to save further. Of course, this level of saving will require a lot of sacrifice and does result in not a lot of personal time for you. But I thought to myself, it was so, so worth it because I am so happy with where I am now. And all the time and efforts that I've put in are starting to pay off in literally two years. So if this is the sort of lifestyle that you might wanna achieve, then you'll hopefully find this video really helpful. And hopefully I'll give you some tips which you can take away and apply to your life starting today. Obviously the main tip is to generate yourself another source of income, which I'll talk about more later on in the video, but also it's about being careful with your current income source as well and looking to save where you can. So I'm first gonna talk about your main job because it's not all about having another source of income. It is also, of course, about being in a well-paying job as well. You don't have to have another source of income. So this video will be focusing on your main job as well and how you can achieve as much income as you possibly can in your current role, as well as having a side hustle or a hobby, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So in the first two years of saving, when I saved my first 20,000 pounds, I did as much as I possibly could to achieve achieve as far up the career path as I possibly could in my full-time job because I knew that the only way of earning a decent you know good salary of course was to put the hard work in to show I was putting hard work in and to climb that career ladder if you like as much as I possibly could quickly to achieve the income that I wanted and I did this by completing exams to get as qualified as I could in my current position and I also did this by asking for harder work so when I was working on a piece of work I would always ask for something a little bit harder a little bit more challenging so that I was constantly developing my skill set, developing my knowledge and showing to my company that I really wanted to work hard, I wanted to achieve great things in that job and that I really cared about my job as well. This is so important in a job, you can't just sit there and expect a promotion because you've been at a company for five years. There could be someone that's been there only six months and may get ahead of you because they are putting the hard work in and they are asking and showing that they want to achieve more. It's so important to be vocal about this. So it's so, so important to make it very, very clear and obvious to your employers that you want to progress, you want to work hard and you want to get to the next steps. When I was trying to develop my skill set at work and to get promotions, I took as much as I could in my control and didn't leave it in anyone else's hands. And this ensures that you're in control of your future and no one else. I made sure that I had regular meetings with my employers to determine what I needed to do to get to the next steps. And also move around jobs. If you're not achieving what you want to achieve where you currently are, it's about moving around and taking control. I did this by moving to a different job and I increased my salary straight 
straight away by 50%. I then worked really hard over the next 18 months and I increased my salary by a further 60%. So it was significantly higher than it was at the beginning of the 18 months when I first moved into the new role. Obviously, this is all way easier said than done. So it's really about you sitting down and thinking about your specific job role. What is it that you like about your job role? Make a note of everything that you love about your job role. And then also make notes of what you think you can achieve as the next step in your job role. Do you know what the next role up entails? Is it something that interests you? If not, is there any other jobs in your company or in the industry that you work in that float your boat that you think that's something that you would really enjoy doing? Another great thing to do is to speak to a manager and to express your interest in progression. So ask your manager what the next step is. Ask them what you need to do to get there. Is there exams that are needed? Is there just experience that's needed? If it's just experience, make sure you get as much as you can. You don't need to wait around to get two years or three years experience. You can cram a lot into a short space of time if you ask for the extra work, if you show that you want to learn more, you could ask to shadow colleagues or you could ask to actually help out with extra work as well. If when you speak to your manager about these things and they show no sign at all of any career progression, then it sadly is time to move on. I'm a strong believer in making sure that you chase your dreams and you chase your goals and you do everything in your power to get where you want to be. I don't recommend staying in a job where there's no progression at all. I know it's so hard when you really love your job and you love your colleagues and you have a nice job. It is so daunting and scary to have to go for interviews and to find a new job. It's, it is a hard thing to do and it's, of course it's scary. But by doing this, you're benefiting yourself, you're gonna increase your income levels and you're gonna to get to a harder role which is just gonna get you a step closer to where you wanna be. So it really is about taking control of your life, your future, and not waiting around for someone else. If your manager is telling you that there's definitely career progression available, then don't stop there. Ask them exactly what you need to do to get there. Make it very, very clear, and I will be documenting the meetings too. So take some notes, and then draft an email to your manager along the lines of further to our meeting of and the date, I wanted to clarify our discussions and then you can bullet point everything that was said and just ask them to kindly respond to confirm that you understood correctly. You then have evidence and proof of what was discussed. So that if this ever changes at a late date and they don't recall the meeting, you have hardcore evidence there to present to them. So it's all about protecting yourself, looking after yourself and covering your back as well in these situations. And it sounds mad, but you really do need to do it. Also make sure to ask your manager if there's a way that you can track your progress. So can you have monthly meetings with them or every three months have a meeting to discuss your development and how you're getting on with it and what you can do to improve and to achieve and to get closer to the next job role. All of these things I've said do sound really daunting. I appreciate that. But do remember you go to work to earn a living. You go to work to earn the money that gives you the lifestyle you want. So if you're not in a job that you like, you're not in a job that's fulfilling what you want, you need to take control of that and do everything in your power power to progress. If you're in a situation that this just isn't possible right now, which I appreciate because of everything going on in the world right now, this year might not be as easy as other years would be to achieve this, then it's about looking at your situation now, things that you can do to better your life without necessarily walking away from your job because I know job security right now is a real must and it's quite scary to just go and jump ship to change a job, especially with everything going on in the world. My advice last year, year before, wouldn't have been the same, but obviously it's a little bit different this year, so that's something to consider as well. But look at the things you can do right now to better you and your CV. So is there any online courses you can do? Is there any exams that you can do? Does your employer support exams? Do they pay for exams? If so, do as many exams as you can. Get as many skill sets under your belt as you can. So that even if you're not making a move to a new job straight away, still doing everything in your power to enable you to earn more money when the time is right. And you've still used this time of not moving jobs to better yourself and to make you more attractive for another employer. So that's what I did to get myself in a good position where I was able to save relatively quickly and a nice amount of money whilst working in my full-time job. So you can just stop here and get to the position you want to be and just save this way, which is what most people do. And it's absolutely fine. And it's what I did until you know, a couple of years ago, but what I started doing about two and a half years ago was my YouTube channel. So I really wanted to do YouTube forever. And I'm not gonna make this video specific about YouTube because there's obviously so many different things you can do to earn another source of income. This isn't me pushing YouTube on you to say you need to do YouTube. This is just obviously what I did as my side hustle or hobby, if you like. So first off, I think it's so important to pick something that you love. So with YouTube, I love YouTube. I have been obsessed with it since I was about 13 or 14. Whenever I first came across it, I've been utterly obsessed with it and just watch it all the time. So 
it was something that I really loved. And when I started it out, of course, I didn't start it out to make money, just to clear that up. But um, obviously it's turned into what does make me a nice amount of money now. Anyway, that's going off track now. The main point I'm trying to say is that you need to find something that you love doing. So it could be YouTube if that's something you love doing. It could be content creating on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or wherever it may be. You might love content creating, i.e. social media sort of things like I do. Or you might love doing things like designing so you might love making logos or websites you might be so good at it and it might be something that you did at school and college and you're amazing at but you haven't gone into that field of work so you've kind of just stopped doing it but you could have a real passion in that sector and you could also have a real creative flair and could be someone that could turn it into a little bit of a living as well you might be someone that's very crafty and loves to paint or draw or stitch or make things and you might be able to make something that you could sell on Etsy or eBay or Facebook or somewhere like that. So drill in and nail into your hobbies, what you love and also what you're good at. So think about things that you could do which you could monetize. What about you is unique and different that you can monetize? So have a real think about that and it might only make you a few pounds a week or day or you know, it might start off small, but you have to take the step and you have to take the leap of faith that you will achieve as long as you put the hard work in. And the biggest piece of advice I can give when it comes to a side hustle is consistency, making sure that you're giving good quality content, whatever that may be, if it's an item you're making from scratch, if it's content you're putting out there, you've got to make sure you are happy with what you're putting out online or what you're selling, that you're very consistent with it. So if you have a shop, make sure that you're constantly thinking of new ideas and new stock ideas and constantly refreshing stock. If you sell out, make sure you're keeping the work going to keep that shop going. Don't draw it to a halt because that's when it becomes a lot harder to keep it going again. In terms of consistency, when it does come to online content, I started by posting about three to five to six videos every single week since I started. So the bare minimum I've done is about three videos and then the most I did is five or six videos a week. It's so 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 important especially when you're doing something online that you are consistent the same goes for a shop if you are a shop you should be running a social media page alongside it to promote your shop and you need to be posting on there regularly because the more regular you are i feel like the algorithms favoritize the more regular you are i guess it pushes your content to more people and it shows that you're bothered about that it shows that you love what you do and you're passionate about that and you're really working hard and people see that another thing that you need to do is to add value again this is more on the social media side of things but adding value such as when I do videos I try and do videos that will add value something that people want to know about so it might be reviewing a brand it might be reviewing a house product it could be doing my house up on a budget savings videos they're all things that add value all things that people are searching for because they want to know about that brand they want to know what's new in that shop they want to know how to save x amount everything i put out online pretty much is things that try and add value or things that people are going to be searching for because they want to know how to do something that's such a big part of the social media online kind of job if you like it's creating content because people want to find out how to do something that's what so many videos are about unless you're doing a blog most of the online videos that people that creators do are to try and add value and to help people and things that people are going to be searching for and that's going to be how you grow your page as well obviously things that are popular as well always helps i don't really follow trends as such but i do stick to things i know are going to be popular so primark videos i know are always going to do well on youtube so i make sure i add one of them in every month or so things like my home bargains and bnm they're all videos that i know do well on my channel and my audience like to watch so i always make sure to add in regular videos that i know are popular because that draws people to your channel and keeps your channel going if you like but again this is more the social media side of things and doesn't apply to every single side hustle but I thought I'd add that in there too because I do get asked quite a lot about YouTube and how I grew and what I did and that's literally all I did consistency content people want to see and putting hard work in basically and the main thing I want you to take away from this video is patience I have not got patience but I did have when it came to my side hustle because when it comes to a side hustle, you are never, and this extremely lucky, gonna start making thousands of pounds overnight. It just doesn't happen. It's so easy to give up when you don't see progress because you'll put content out there, whatever it is, it could be an item you're selling, it could be a YouTube video. If you're not seeing instant progress, it's so easy to just give up and just think, I'm rubbish, I'm not gonna go anywhere, let's just give up. Being consistent will give results eventually. It could take only a week, it could take a month, a year, it could take five years, you just don't know how long it's gonna take. But as long as you believe in what you're doing, you're putting the hard work in, you're giving content that you know is good quality to the best of your standard that you can achieve, 
then someone out there is going to like what you're doing. Someone out there is going to like what you're making. And eventually that will draw traction and eventually people are going to start noticing you and to enjoy your content or whatever you're making as well. So it's so, so important to be patient with these things. I have gone from having my main full-time salary and nothing else within a kind of two-year period to making enough money that I'm matching my full-time job and I've you know managed to save double what I used to save and it's amazing and all of that was down to a little bit of patience a little bit of self-belief and like I say just keep putting that hard work in there and positive thinking as well be positive because if you think of something and you think you can achieve it you can obviously if you think that you're gonna have this big business. Without the hard work, of course it's not gonna happen, but I'm a strong believer in it. If you can think that you can do it and you believe you can really do it, as long as you put that hard work in there and you keep thinking about that thing and what you wanna achieve and you do everything in your power to achieve it, you will get there eventually. I don't think time is necessarily something that you can think about as much. You can't necessarily say in two years, I will be here. You can obviously say that as a goal, but I think it's more important to focus on what you wanna achieve than the time scale. But Hopefully that makes sense, guys. But yeah, that's basically what I did to save £40,000 in two years with my full-time job and then also my side hustle as well, which is YouTube. And like I say, you don't have to have a side hustle at all. You can just progress at work. But I think it's so, so important to do everything in your power to progress at work and to put the hard work in because at the end of the day, if you're working, say, 40 hours a week, you can either work 40 hours a week in a job you find easy and you're getting bored of, or you can work really, really, really hard for the 40 hours a week. You're still at work for 40 hours a week. If you work hard or if you have an easy job, you're still there for 40 hours. So make those 40 hours count, no matter what you're doing, make it count and put the effort in and do everything you can to progress at work because that is where the money's at <laughs> and the money is how you're gonna be saving this. So I really hope this video was helpful, guys. Like I said at the beginning, this is not me bragging or showing off or anything of the kind. This sort of video is so highly requested and that is why I filmed this for you today. I really hope you take something away from it and find it helpful. And let me know what other financial content you wanna see in the comments down below. Hit the like button and subscribe and put the notifications bell on too if you're new here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.